Welcome to our dive into the world of a classic 1964 film. This cinematic gem quickly gained a cult following for its unique mix of horror and campy entertainment. Set in a quaint coastal town, the story unfolds as a group of teenagers faces terrifying sea monsters spawned from toxic waste dumped into the ocean. For many, watching this movie is a memorable experience that lingers long after the credits roll. Some have even found unexpected inspiration or impact from the film. Have you ever been influenced by a movie in such a way? Share your stories and memories with us in the comments below. Whether it's funny, shocking, or a bit sad, these films often leave a lasting impression on our lives. So grab your popcorn and get ready for a journey into the bizarre world of this classic. Don't forget to share your thoughts and memories with us. We're eager to hear from you. In the 1964 film, The Horror of Party Beach, a seacoast town becomes the backdrop for a series of ominous events. The narrative unfolds with the careless dumping of radioactive waste into the sea, leading to the reanimation of several zombie fish creatures. These menacing creatures invade the seaside town, unleashing a wave of terror and violence. The film features notable actors such as John Scott, Alice Lyon, Alan Laurel, Eula Bell Moore, and the Del Iris. Set against the backdrop of the Cold War era, the theme revolves around the dangers of atomic energy and the unforeseen problems it creates for mankind. Filmed in Stamford, Connecticut, within a tight three-week schedule, The Horror of Party Beach garnered a reputation as one of the worst films ever made. The production suffered from major flaws in lighting, editing, and direction. The monster's mass design, intended to be frightening, ended up being more laughable than anything else. Despite these shortcomings, the film maintains a certain charm for fans of B-movies. The plot unfolds with the introduction of radioactive waste causing fish to merge with human remains, creating bloodthirsty creatures that attack unsuspecting teenagers at the popular party beach. The reasons behind the presence of human cadavers at the ocean floor remain unexplained, adding to the film's quirky narrative. Local scientists attempt to unravel the mystery, with only the stereotypical black housemaid Yulabel offering an explanation rooted in voodoo. The film, often deemed one of the worst horror accomplishments, manages to captivate viewers with its vivid and pleasantly absurd portrayal of a B-movie. The monsters resemble the offspring of the creature from the Black Lagoon, while the cast members embody either wooden puppets or exaggerated stereotypes. The soundtrack, courtesy of the Del Iris rock band, adds to the movie's charm with swinging rock hits and sentimental ballads. Gruesome yet comical chocolate syrup makeup effects highlight the beastly attacks. The eventual solution to defeating the monsters, involving the use of sodium, adds an unexpected twist to the storyline. Director Del Tenney deserves credit for transforming dreary Connecticut filming locations into a seemingly flourishing South Californian beach community. The horror of Party Beach may have its share of flaws, but it manages to entertain with its unique blend of horror, humor, and unintentional charm. In a small town by the coast, a movie made in 1964 brought together local folks from Stamford, Connecticut to play many of its supporting roles, giving the film an authentic feel of being shot in that location. These residents left their regular lives behind to be part of the movie's background. Despite what many people think, famous horror writer Stephen King didn't think highly of this movie. He actually called it a terrible little film. Even though it might have had some appeal, the movie didn't win the admiration of the famous horror author. During filming, there was an unexpected problem. One of the extras who was really into motorcycles wanted to get more screen time. He tried to push his way to the front of the biker group to be on camera, causing a big crash involving several bikers, including the actor playing the gang leader. This led to delays in filming, turning what should have been a normal shoot into a chaotic mess. So, even though Stephen King wasn't a fan, the horror of Party Beach has its own interesting stories like how locals got involved in the movie and the chaos caused by an overeager biker extra. It's a movie that left a lasting memory on those who helped make it. Made on a budget of $50,000, this film exceeded expectations by earning back its cost, becoming a success for 20th Century Fox. The director, Del Tenney, kept the monster suits from the film and amused guests by wearing them at gatherings. A notable feature of the film's promotion was a sign at each theater requiring moviegoers to sign a fright release before watching. This sign emphasized releasing the theater from responsibility for any fright-related consequences. Del Tenney's humorous antics with the monster suits added a playful touch to the film's legacy. Inspiring the song by Sloppy Seconds, the horror of Party Beach gained recognition for its cult status. In 1997, it appeared on Mystery Science Theater 3000 with humorous commentary. 
During production, one monster suit proved too small, leading to a last-minute casting of a 16-year-old boy whose small stature fit the suit perfectly. Thus, he became the unexpected face of terror on the screen. The behind-the-scenes quirks added to the movie's legacy, making it a fascinating piece of cinematic history. Filming for the horror of Party Beach took place over three weeks in the Ship and Point area of Stamford, Connecticut. During these beach sequences, assistant director Wayne Tippett portrayed one of the two drunks who meet their demise at the hands of the monstrous creatures. Interestingly, the underwater transformation scenes of the monsters were not filmed in the ocean, but on a stage. The filmmakers cleverly superimposed images of fish from an aquarium onto the dissolving stage shots to create the illusion of an underwater transformation. This innovative approach allowed for greater control over the filming environment and resulted in visually striking sequences. After the 1964 movie, The Horror of Party Beach was released, star Eula Bell Moore passed away. Director Del Tenney revealed that only two complete monster heads were made for the film. This resulted in unclear shots of multiple monsters. For the climactic scene at Fingal's Quarry, various takes of complete monsters were superimposed. Sponges served as lining for the monster suits. The unique techniques used in production contributed to the movie's distinct visual style. In a particular scene around the one hour mark, Hank drives past the Guggenheim Museum, known for its distinctive spiral ramp visible from the exterior. Interestingly, director Del Tenney himself took on the role of the monster that attempts to capture the two girls leaving the drugstore. During a pivotal meeting with 20th Century Fox executives to pitch the film, Tenney arranged for individuals to don the monster suits for promotional purposes. However, one of the monsters happened to be in the restroom when an executive entered, leading to a comical reaction. Despite the initial scare, 20th Century Fox ultimately released the film. Ranked among the 50 worst films of all time by Harry Medved and Randy Lowell, The Horror of Party Beach is a movie that's known for being one of the worst ever made. Surprisingly, famous horror author Stephen King is a fan and considers it one of his favorites. In the film, there's a funny mistake where three women are in a convertible. In one shot, the woman in the back seat is on the right side, but in another shot, she magically switches to the left side. It's a little mistake that adds unintentional humor to the movie. Even though the horror of Party Beach is often criticized for being a bad movie, it's also got some fans like Stephen King. The movie's accidental mistakes, like the mix-up in the convertible scene, make it strangely amusing. So, despite its flaws, the horror of Party Beach has earned a place on the list of the worst films ever made. But interestingly, it has also caught the attention of unexpected people, including the master of horror himself, Stephen King.